Our go-to statements. Our go-to statements dangerous. Should you avoid go-to statements? That is a good question, and I'm gonna answer this right now. So here's the thing. Um, generally, it's not a good idea to broadly apply something uh, everywhere. So, for example, if there is a clear uh, reason why you'd use a go-to it's a good idea to use the go-to, right? So if you see that there are two alternatives to code, right? So you have one code snippet that looks better with the go-to compared to another one, uh, use the one that looks better, right? That's very basic, like we're not robots, right? So if you have a um, situation in which a go-to is better for you, you should use the go-to. Now, uh, there are like a couple of like broadly accepted uh, like examples of where go-tos would actually be a lot better in code, but um, before I get to that, um, I want to like bring to your attention, there are actually languages, there are actually designers of languages that have decided not to add uh, go-tos to the language. So for example, uh, Rust, JavaScript, and I believe Python, those languages just do not add go-tos whatsoever. Uh, for them, go-tos are not a good idea. You should not use go-tos. Uh, you should use, uh, I don't know, like anything else, like the break, continue, um, stuff like that, right? Now, uh, before I begin, I actually want to show you how GoTo's work in Golang, and, which is actually funny. The, the reason I made this video is because I, I didn't realize Golang had GoTo's, right? So it's, it's a newer language, right? It's a language that was designed, like, I wouldn't say like recently, but like it's not really old, right? It's a fairly new language in comparison. Uh, but for whatever reason, it has go-tos, right? So like, as you can see, this is a go-to in Golang. So I have this go-to statement, I have a label. And as you can see, like as soon as the code gets here, it's just gonna jump to this label down here. And um, here's the thing. This is why I made this video because Go was designed to be a language that is supposed to be as readable as possible, right? So the fact that there are people who tell you never to use go-tos, but the designers of Golang have decided to include them really shows you that there are use cases for go-tos. And here's one of them. So here is a nested for loop. We have a nested for loop. So we have a for here and we have another for here. And what I'm doing in this example is I'm checking if i is equal to one and j is equal to one. And if that's true, I set found to be true and I use this go to. Now, before I, now here's the thing. Imagine this, imagine you don't have a go to, right? Imagine go to's don't exist in Golang. How would you jump out of this nested for loop? The, the problem is you really wouldn't be able to jump out of it because actually you could, but you would at the expense of complexity, right? So this code snippet would become a lot more complex. It would add complexity. It would add like, you would have to add, let's say a break here. So you would have to add a break here. Then you have to check the same condition down here. And then like, so, so you would have to add a condition here then break out of it here as well, right? And all of that can be avoided just by adding just by adding this go-to. So as you can see, um, here's actually a rule of thumb uh, with go-tos. Go-tos are less dangerous, so they make your code less spaghetti if you jump forward, right? So if you're jumping forward in your code, the code is becomes less spaghetti in comparison to like jumping like backwards. So if you have a label and you're jumping forward in comparison to like, let's say I take this and I put it like up here, right? So this is, this is more dangerous compared to this, right? So jumping forward, it's okay. Jumping backward, not so much. Uh, but uh, generally, um, this is really like, I think the most compelling example of why go to statements are useful are, is this example right here with the nested for loop, because there really isn't a good example of, so there really isn't a good example of where you use a go to statement that kind of like stands out like this example does right now. So this example shows you that if you have a nested for loop and you use a go to, to jump forward, again, jumping forward out of this nested for loop, the alternative to this is more complex than just using the go-to. So another example is skipping logic, right? So if you uh, are like sure that you check some condition and you know something's true and you don't, you don't really need to check anything else below that, but you still have the code, uh, you may want to use go-to, you may not. Uh, this, like, so the thing is like this example isn't as, 
it, it doesn't really stand out as much as like this one, right? Like this, this example is my favorite, like the Nestor for loop. There is no other way of breaking out of this without using a go-to that does not make this code more complex. Now, so this is an example of a good go-to statement, right? Now let me show you a bad example. So this is a horrible example, right? This makes absolutely no sense. You have to kind of look at it for a couple of minutes to realize what's happening. So what I'm doing here is kind of, I'm kind of like emulating a for loop. So I have this counter. This is the initialization. Uh, I'm decrementing this counter here. And the, the the thing is like actually to some purpose. So in a for loop, you decrement at the very end, right? But here, you can put the decrement anywhere you want, right? So you can put it here, you can put it like, let's say, here. It doesn't really matter, right? And uh, finally, what we're doing is we're checking if the counter is greater than zero, we're gonna go to um, deck counter. So it's gonna keep looping until it gets to zero, right? Um, and the reason why this is a bad example of using a go-to is because the same code, so, well, not exactly the same code, but like, very similar to this is this for loop, right? And this for loop is three lines of code, right? So it's three lines of code in comparison to, what is it, like six? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, and this is like seven lines of code. So in comparison to this for loop, you have this uh, go-to loop, and yeah, it, it, really, it, it really doesn't like, the, the the two are not they don't really mesh well right so again um if you want to use go to's i think like the most general the most generally accepted rule of thumb is uh you're better off jumping forward like this like in this example so like with a nestor for loop if you jump forward like right down here this is generally fine this is actually preferable to uh, breaking out of these loops uh, individually uh skipping I don't know, maybe, uh, it really depends on the code base. With go-tos, jumping backwards is not a good idea. It, it actually makes your code a lot more complicated and harder to read if you jump backwards in your code. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, go-to statements, don't use them unless you're breaking out of nested for loops. Anyways, uh, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you later.